Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Adobe XD. It's a fantastic little program, part of the Adobe suite. Uh, it has a similar kind of feel to Adobe Illustrator, but it's much more simplified. And it also contains a lot of features that Adobe Illustrator doesn't have, specifically to facilitate uh, interactive experience design. So let's get right into it. You're going to have installed Adobe XD, uh, and you'll get to this screen when you first open the program. So we're going to start by just clicking on this uh, iPhone 14. Uh, obviously, if you're producing a web design or a web application, you might want to click on this one, Instagram story, or create your own custom size. We're just going to start by doing a basic phone app. So I'm just going to click on this one. And right away, we're given this screen here. So as you can see, you can scroll down, you can kind of see effectively this is in your artboard. I would imagine that you would understand that this would be the phone screen that you are working with. Uh, so that's the, that's the very first basic thing. Now you can duplicate that screen by clicking up here and holding the Alt button and dragging it across. So that's just so you can set up your many different screens. So we'll delete that for now. Now let's go for a quick tour. This is of course your screen and this is your overall working area inside this gray area here. Uh, over to the far left, you've got a bunch of buttons, sort of similar to Illustrator, but much more simplified, much more streamlined. Uh, the functionality for design is lower than Illustrator, uh, but it has all of the tools you need to produce a really nice interactive experience design. If you're gonna do complex illustrations, uh, you would probably want to do them in Illustrator and then bring them into Adobe XD because Illustrator has a lot more functionality for those complex illustrations. The next thing you can see over here is you've got your document assets. Now this is what makes Adobe XD really special, particularly compared to other programs, is that you can set yourself a style guide uh, create your components such as what a primary button looks like, what a secondary button looks like, and you can save them and then you can just drag and drop them into the document and they're all editable uh, through here. So if you imagine you make a big green primary button, you set it as a component, you put it in a hundred different locations across your artboards. Uh, if you wanted to suddenly change that to red and make the box rounded or give the box a drop shadow, you can edit one and it will just change all of them. Same goes for colors and character styles as well, which is effectively what we're talking about today. All right, so let's get the ball rolling. Um, first and foremost, uh, let's create some boxes and we're gonna set some colors for our document. So this is what you wanna do with your interactive experience design. You wanna start by um, setting a bit of a style guide. So setting your, your document style. So over here, of course, you've got your edits for the box. Uh, I'm just going to set this fill color. Let's just work with kind of a green for now. Maybe let's just do it this garish, super light green. And I'm just gonna click the plus button and that'll save that. I'm going to then go across, hold the alt button and duplicate that one. Maybe set a, perhaps like a muted blue, uh, that can be the secondary color. I'm going to go ahead and I'll set a black. So let's just imagine this is all on a black background. Um, well, that's just shy of black, but yeah, close enough. Uh, and then I might set like perhaps a lighter gray. Um, and we'll set that as well. And perhaps that could be the text. Uh, and then, yeah, perhaps even we'll extend on that and we'll create a white as well. So this is going to be our color palette. Uh, now you can change these colors at any time. So once you've done the design, you can just go ahead and change these five colors and you can completely revive the entire color palette. So for this one, we want to work with a black background. So I'm just going to click on the black there. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up some character styles. So that's just as simple as just setting up uh, hierarchically. Oops, let's see if we can spell it right. Heading one. Um, let's make that say 40 point um, and let's make it white so that it stands out and then we'll just hit the plus button so that'll save that character style. I'm just going to alt and drag that now uh, and then I might set this as 30. Uh, I'll call this heading 2 uh, and I might make this one perhaps the sort of a lighter grey side. I'm just going to hit that one. And over here, I'm going to go 
maybe white again. Now I'll add that and we'll just call this one body copy. Now you can have four, five, six different uh, heading sizes and this just sets up your, your hierarchy as far as uh, what needs to be seen and what needs to stand out to the user the most. The final one is components. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up uh, and we'll just start with a few basic buttons. So let's, uh, let's create a square. Um, now, similar to Illustrator, you've got these little nodes that happen when you create a square. You can drag those and create a rounded square. I'm going to remove the border again, and I want my primary button to be green. Uh, so then what I'll do is I will, um, yeah, perhaps uh, put a heading two there. I'm just clicking and dragging. Now that's sitting behind, so you can just right click on that and go bring to front if you want, or you control shift forward square bracket, whatever, whatever suits you. Uh, we'll center that, we'll centrally align the text, and we'll just call this primary button. Now, as you probably noticed, that button's really hard to read, it's not very accessible. So we're going to talk about how we can address those things later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Alt button now, drag it across, and I'm going to make this blue, and I'm going to call this secondary button. And then what I might do is I might perhaps just add a third one, which is just text only, tertiary button. So we need to now go into this, and I'm just going to click the plus button to add that as a component. You could name this by double clicking on it, primary button, secondary button, Oops, spelt it wrong there. I'm in a bit of a rush now, aren't I? And you can have your tertiary button there. Um, button. Okay, so uh, another final thing that we're going to do before we close this off um, is we'll set up a text box as well. So this is just a box where you can enter the text. Now, the other thing I'm going to say is hit the control one button every now and again. That's going to give you a one to one size. So that just sort of means that you know exactly what it's going to look like in real life on someone's actual phone. So I recommend that you uh, try to do that as much as possible. Control one, it gets you that zoom 100%. Because if you're working out here, you might end up making huge buttons that, uh, that when you actually look at it at scale, the buttons are way too big. Same goes for if you're zoomed right in, you could set text. Uh, and then when you actually view it on the device, you might find that that text is way too small. So let's go ahead, and make a little text box. I'm just going to click on here, text here. I'm going to set that text to perhaps black text here. Uh, and we'll set that as well. So I'm just going to, oh, no, don't need a productivity, thanks. Uh, I'm just going to set that component as well. And we're just going to call that text box. All right, so let's bring this all together now. Um, well, before we do that, let's just set up a basic logo and we can we can set this up just to kind of get your head around the tools here. I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna call this Audio Mate. We're making a, uh, a music library app, a bit like Spotify, I suppose. So I'm just gonna click on this triangle here. Um, so make a pretty basic logo. Hopefully you might be able to make something a little bit more sophisticated than this, but we might just make the triangle and I might make a circle going to click on that, uh, maybe do that. And then I might just grab my little heading one over here, um, make it centrally aligned, and we'll just call it Audio Mate. There we go. And oh, let's be let's be extra fancy and we'll make that a, uh, a gray thing there. So and what we might do is we might, um, yeah, maybe add that as a component. So that way you can just uh, throw your logo in wherever you need. Uh, now, one thing that I'm going to show you is have a look at this. When I resize it, it keeps all of the sizes, which is sometimes good, but it's sometimes terribly annoying, especially with a logo that turns it to mud. So you're going to little click on this little checkbox here and turn off that responsive resize. So now you can resize it however you like. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, we're going to create, I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to create a welcome screen uh, and a sign in screen. So what we're going to do for the welcome screen, I'm just going to load, drop in this logo here. 
Uh, let's see if it's doing that. Yeah, that's resizing pretty nicely. I'm going to hit the plus one button so that it's all uh, at scale. Uh, I'm going to click on a uh, click here and maybe do a uh, sign in. Uh, now we're going to get to the fact that this is an inaccessible type. Wouldn't be great for people with vision impairments. Uh, and I might just add a secondary button here. Um, create account. Uh, and yeah, look, maybe let's just add a little tertiary button down the bottom. And let's just call that uh, exit. So simple as that. Um, now what we might do is imagine that you click the little sign in button. Let's create a couple of little text boxes. I'm just going to put that here. I'm going to alt and drag that there. And then I'm just going to click on my little primary button here. Sign in. Naturally, you might want to do a screen for sign up as well, which has a lot more information. And let's just drag the logo in. Um, and we'll maybe make that sort of, oh, maybe just sort of pushing it here or something like that. So you've set up your two little things. The final thing I'm going to talk about before I uh, finish up is this green, which I talked about. So this is the great thing about Adobe XD. I've set up this really garish green, and it's quite difficult to read this text, which is a big problem for interface uh, interactive experience design. So what I'm going to do now is I might perhaps choose to right click on this, click on the edit button, and maybe make this a softer green. Um, yeah, perhaps pick a green that's going to allow for a bit more legibility. Um, maybe something like that. The other thing you might find is perhaps that the text I've chosen here is um, is gray, which doesn't have much of a contrast. So I could then instead go right click on my primary button and click edit main component. So then I can go ahead and click on this text if it lets me and make this white. So now you can see that that's changed the text on all of those buttons uh, right away. So you can imagine the power of being able to do that, that instead of having to go ahead and one by one change the color, uh, you can just set your styles here and then modify those styles. So that's effectively it for this lesson. Next lesson, we're going to extend on this by creating a couple more screens with um, by moving into what the library might look like. And then the following session, we're going to move into how you might be able to turn that into an interactive experience design.